Shalom from Jerusalem. This is uh, TV7 News Israel. And this is the thrice weekly update of the war between Israel and Hamas with the various branches to the northern arena, Judea and Samaria, the Red Sea, and practically everywhere, elsewhere. This is the 180th day after the Hamas raid and massacre of October the 7th, 2023, and the war still goes on almost into its seventh month now, with 1,500 or more Israelis being uh, murdered and killed, and um, 134 Israeli hostages, many of them already dead, and uh, several dozen still alive, captive with Hamas. And today, in our update, uh, we have two distinguished experts from Rotterdam in the Netherlands, Professor Uri Rosenthal, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Netherlands. Uri, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you again. And uh, from Central Israel, Brigadier General in the Reserves, Relic Shafir, an Israel uh, Air Force fighter pilot and uh, senior officer who, uh, among other missions, took part in the raid on Os Iraq, the Iraqi nuclear reactor in June of 1981, and commanded one of Israel's biggest Air Force bases, Tel Nof. Welcome, Relic. Welcome. So obviously our topic today um, has to do with two Air Force strikes which took place earlier this week with totally different consequences and therefore implications and repercussions. One of the raids was in Damascus, Syria, where senior officers of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Quds Force were killed by a precision strike. The uh, Air Force has managed to hit the uh, Iranian embassy annex or consulate between other buildings in the Syrian capital and it took by surprise the meeting of these uh, Iranian plotters of further attacks against Israel. And uh, this is quite a blow to the Iranian effort to employ proxies in Syria, in Lebanon, and elsewhere. The other strike, unfortunately, took place in Gaza, in the uh, south central part of the Strip where seven uh, volunteers working uh, for the World uh, Central Kitchen Organization, helping the uh, hungry Gazans to feed themselves, were unintentionally killed by an Air Force, uh, probably uh, uninhabited or UAV uh, unmanned aerial vehicle. Israel uh, has expressed regret. It is investigating the whereabouts, but obviously not only condemnations are pouring in from around the world, but it could also limit the Israeli room for maneuver when it wants uh, to further deploy its military inside Gaza. So General Shafir, first of all, um, you're an experienced fighter pilot, although here the word fighter may not uh, uh, be the, the right one. This was an attack mission, uh, air to ground rather than air to air. Um, it's a bomber, whether manned or unmanned uh, mission. How can that happen um, when Israel prides itself so much on the mechanism built to coordinate between the ground forces and the air assets which they call um, on when they need uh, air support.
This is a, um, a matter that is under investigation now, and um, so we can't really call the shots too early, but uh, let's look at it as a, uh, a part and parcel of the, uh, the whole campaign. Um, the intelligence, which is uh, either from ground forces uh, or other types of intelligence, flows into the Air Force as targets. Um, and it's by geographical bound areas. It's, it seems uh, as though uh, the uh, uh, personnel who participated in the uh, aid mission uh, were not in their geographical uh, designated area, or at least so the uh, people who manned the uh, uh, ground stations uh, handling the UAV thought. Um, and uh, whoever gave the order, the, the Air Force does not choose its own targets, but uh, it, it's fed either by ground, as, as I said, or by intelligence, something erred on the way in recognizing that these are not Hamas. Uh, further uh, complicate, complications are that there were some Hamas personnel uh, alongside these, uh, these people um, and this will be found out. But this is unfortunate just to add to the fact that about 10% of Israeli casualties uh, are from friendly fire. So this mista these mistakes uh, are part and parcel of uh, a very close urban warfare that uh, sometimes takes the lives of our own people, uh, and in this particular case of uh, friendly people, so uh, uh, a regret is not only due, but uh, a very uh, thorough investigation is due to uh, place to the uh, uh, people who were hurt and the organizations uh, of the errors that were made in a way that can be trusted um, and keep the Air Forces and the IDF's uh, legacy uh, of trust and credibility at a high level, even though this is a, a sad moment to do so. Um, when the war started, the IDF explained that there are two um, sorts of targets which the Air Force is uh, called upon to uh, strike, whether by uh, fighters, whether by um, armed helicopters or by drones. The first one is uh, what um, uh, is in the so-called target bank, um, what the uh, intelligence agencies uh, have uh, indicated uh, should be struck. There is enough uh, time to plan the strike, and uh, this is uh, uh, usually done without uh, errors. The other uh, sort uh, are targets of opportunity. Once uh, the uh, battle starts, once uh, the ground forces are being shot at from various uh, structures or uh, tunnel shafts and they are uh, in danger, then the ground commander calls on the Air Force for help. And there, uh, there can be casualties among non-combatants or even among the IDF soldiers themselves, even though it uh, did not happen uh, during this campaign uh, regarding IDF soldiers. The 20% that you mentioned uh, were from uh, ground forces uh, accidentally hitting other ground forces. But in earlier campaigns, it did happen. So the Air Force really doesn't have any ability to intervene uh, once it is uh, given a contract, quote unquote, it goes on and executes it. Well, not exactly. Um, in whichever way the uh, UAV operators or uh, pilots, either helicopter or fighters, in case they uh, recognize through their uh, visual systems, uh, which are part of the, uh, the munition delivery systems, if they recognize, let's say, children or um, um, civilians, uh, then they have the right and, in fact, the obligation to refrain from fire. Uh, but if it looks from the air um, like Hamas, 
uh, if they're in a zone where Hamas fighters are known to uh, uh, to be around, and if some people are walking around with uh, Kalachnikov guns uh, strangled in, in their area, um, then they're a legitimate target. And in this particular case, I think uh, what we know up to now is that one of them, uh, there was a Hamas uh, terrorist around these uh, vehicles uh, with uh, armed with a Kalachnikov. So that might have uh, um, convinced the operator that this is a hostile target. Um, having said that, I think we should wait for the actual uh, wording uh, of the uh, commission that was set up, which should come out in a day or two with uh, an explanation of what happened. So it's a very important distinction. The ground uh, commander, uh, through the various uh, echelons, um, is the one who asks for the mission to be executed. But the uh, Air Force controller um, can abort. Uh, if uh, the conditions, um, to his uh, mind, are, are not ripe uh, for the mission. Exactly. This is we've we've been doing this for many many years, uh, to the point where when there is a munition, a bomb on the way, let's say from uh, an F thirty five or an F sixteen, and the uh, pilot in the cockpit sees that there are civilians or children approaching the area where he is uh, about to strike, he has the latitude to move the designation to a predetermined area, empty area, so that the bomb will explode and and refrain from hitting uninvolved personnel. In the Gaza in case, it could be the, could be the Mediterranean because it's so close. Um, but sometimes you pick the area before you go into the mission, you pick an empty area so that you know where to move uh, in case this uh, comes up. Also, there were cases where Hamas uh, or Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorists used ambulances or other vehicles uh, to uh, disguise their moves. Uh, perhaps uh, we will find out, as you say, in this uh, after action review, perhaps someone mistakenly thought that the uh, WCK vehicles were used by Hamas and did not know that this particular movement was coordinated with the IDF before it. Thank you, General Shafir. Yes, I'll just mention one more thing, that after two weeks of fighting in the Shifa hospital, where uh, 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 over a thousand terrorists took over the Shifa hospital after it was cleared by the IDF, and during those two weeks, uh, about 200 of them were killed and about 500 uh, terrorists were taken prison as POWs. Um, so this is a, a case where Hamas is using uh, civilian facilities to uh, hide itself and shoot from. Thank you. Professor Rosenthal, how bad is it uh, for Israel? Well, let, let me say that... Um... You are introducing this uh, show with uh, these, uh, with reference to these two uh, air force strikes, and uh, let me say first that uh, it is uh, good, simply good that uh, the Israeli government and the IDF have taken full responsibility for this unfortunate uh, event uh, with the uh, uh, strike on the uh, convoy of the World uh, Central Kitchen. Um, of course, investigation has to be um, uh, waited for, but it, it's good that that uh, uh, also uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that there will be a full and uh, uh, thorough investigation. With regard to the other strike, uh, the strike in uh, Damascus on the premises of the uh, uh, Revolutionary Guard Corps and the Quds uh, uh, Brigade, um, uh, where, by the way, the one of the most important leaders of the uh, uh, guard corps, uh, Reza Zahedi, has been uh, killed. Um, there, I, I was struck actually by the very um, 
restrained reaction on the part of the United States and also uh, the European Union, uh, asking only for... Um, uh, they, they didn't actually say anything on the positive side. They can't do that, of course, in the way you would uh, want them to do. But the restraint was remarkable. And let me also add a, a very small thing. While uh, actually at the same time that the message about this strike in Damascus uh, went on the, um, on the channels, um, the EU was uh, telling openly that they were seriously considering to lift their sanctions on one of the most important cyber IT companies of Iran, uh, Arvon Cloud. So you see how they are balancing their, uh, their uh, policies uh, in a way I don't like that much. Um, so that is actually the situation. And meanwhile, if I may extend the, 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 uh, this uh, uh, matter a little bit. Uh, let, let me, if, if you allow me, uh, let me say that, that I'm still, um, uh, still uh, uh, focusing myself too on the fact that by now, uh, when we talk to, about the position of Israel and the Gaza war, one of the most important things has actually happened over the last uh, one and a half weeks, namely the UN Security Council resolution, which was uh, adopted with an abstention on the part of the United States, where it's actually about an uncoupling, uncoupling uh, of uh, the two uh, basic items at hand, namely on the one hand the uh, uh, the notion of a ceasefire, and on the other hand the release of the hostages which is a very serious kind of uh, development uh, in a way, and which also puts extra pressure on the efforts uh, by the uh, community of uh, Israeli hostages and their, especially their uh, relatives, to uh, plead their, their uh, cause. And uh, uh, looking, anticipate, I'm anticipating the uh, actually the uh, 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 same half year uh, uh, remember of the seventh of October uh, with uh, a large uh, I, I I would say um, it it will be in many countries there will be a definite uh, series of demonstrations uh, in European and also I think in the United States. Um, uh, to plead the cause of the of the hostages, which are in a terrible, terrible position. Every day is counting, and the situation is deteriorating. The uh, UN Security Council resolution, which you uh, referred to, is uh, really moot because uh, the terms of reference had the end of Ramadan, which comes uh, early next week, as uh, the time frame. So uh, uh, there will have to be a new uh, resolution, uh, whether it will uh, link a uh, couple, as, as you said, the two issues uh, remains to be seen. But regarding the, uh, the strike on the World uh, Central Kitchen, um, here there were, there still are, two problems. The first is that President Biden is under a lot of pressure because he was asked, how do you provide Israel with bombs while at the same time you are dropping, parachuting aid uh, to uh, the very same population uh, which is uh, uh, being uh, struck by the bombs? Uh, if not themselves, then uh, they are uh, being uh, dislocated uh, and suffer. And now um, uh, these two um, uh, mana from heaven, uh, so to speak, um, uh, have uh, been joined. Uh, it's bombs on aid uh, workers. And to, to make it even worse, these are not local Palestinians, but uh, people with uh, foreign nationalities, European, uh, Australian, uh, Canadian, um, maybe even a, a dual citizen, American. So how does Israel come out 
of this problem diplomatically? Well, I, I, I would say, uh, uh, Amir, that uh, uh, when you look at it from a diplomatic uh, angle, uh, I would say that, that Israel should uh, try to come up with um, this uh, the results of the investigation uh, uh, as soon as possible and uh, come up with a reliable and uh, open and uh, uh, open uh, conclusions about it and the intricacies of the fact of of the uh, of the matter as they were also mentioned by uh, Relik Shafir of course they are there but the overall um, situation in this respect is bleak and it is uh, if you if you want me to uh, put a little bit salt on on the on the one um, <laughs> let me say that uh, it is the more unfortunate because at the same moment we of course see that uh, the um, uh, halting of the support of the financial support for the UNRWA which is considered to be a, uh, a sort of auxiliary of the uh, of the bad elements in Gaza uh, this uh, uh, halting of the support is uh, by now diminishing one by one countries are saying well we will we will help them and then the uh, the uh, unfortunate strike on the world central kitchen is not helping the um, uh, the picture uh, uh, from the Israeli side. Thank you, uh, Rabbi Shafir. Uh, when you drove your F-16 to Baghdad, uh, the Reagan administration countered uh, for a time by an embargo on the uh, uh, next batch of uh, your beloved F-16s. Now, uh, there is no talk of a real embargo, uh, but um, important political forces in the United States, uh, especially a dozen uh, senators from Biden's own Democratic Party, call on him uh, to put limits and conditions on the supply of uh, munitions to Israel, and uh, to uh, make um, most Israeli moves in Gaza uh, conditioned on American uh, approval. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, responded by calling, of course, this is uh, for the uh, uh, future, not immediately, for enhanced internal production of defense items. And the question is, can you, uh, once you um, uh, get into the cockpit, you harness yourself and uh, you take off, can you uh, execute your missions without American-made uh, bombs and missiles? Uh, is it, the, the plane itself is American-made, of course. Uh, and uh, the Israeli tanks have American engines. Uh, is it possible uh, to be uh, independent, uh, self-sufficient in, in defense? Uh, I think the days when, when countries could be uh, uh, sufficient in the sense that use only their own capabilities are over. Uh, we're talking about planes, uh, even in, within, within the UAVs that are made in Israel, some of the engines and, and the cameras, etc., um, are, are bought elsewhere. So um, uh, this is uh, really a uh, uh, not possible. But I think uh, the, the important thing that comes out is that uh, basic ideas of the diplomatic strategy is the enemy of my enemy is my friend and make as many friends as you can without alienating those who are on the sidelines. So these, these are the very basics that at this time uh, Israel lacks, plus the fact that uh, Netanyahu, for his uh, internal political reasons, uh, does not call what, what Israel sees as the day after, so that even our best friends uh, find it difficult to support 
the Israeli policy without understanding where Israel is going to. Uh, we understand the, the internal problems of Netanyahu with his uh, right-wing uh, coalition. This complicates matter even more. Uh, and President Biden actually uh, used this to separate between the government and the people of Israel. Uh, and he says he supports the people of Israel, uh, but he will limit the activities of the government that he says he sees as unfit for the day after vision that he has. So uh, this uh, makes our position more difficult. And the more we get entangled in Gaza, the more difficult it will become. Uh, American weapons, munitions, uh, and and connections, even intelligence, is uh, part and parcel of this war. Uh, and Israel should seek to strengthen its ties with its friends. Um, and as I said, the enemy, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. The Palestinian Authority should be strengthened. Uh, and we're not really doing much about this for internal political reasons, because who is going to take care of Gaza tomorrow? No answer at this time. Also, it seems as if the tactical is driving the strategic, including in the Damascus strike, which was definitely a technical uh, success, but could bring out uh, a strategic uh, involvement uh, with Iran. Unfortunately, we'll have to uh, return to these subjects uh, in a future update. For the time being, thank you very much, Professor Uri Rosenthal, General Radik Shafir, and we will be back with another edition of uh, update from Jerusalem. This has been TV7 Israel News. Shalom from Jerusalem. Shalom, I'm Danny Ayalon, former Israeli ambassador to the United States, former deputy foreign minister and member of Knesset. Today, I'm very privileged to be hosting TV7's Middle East Review and also being a panelist of the various shows of TV7, which I find the most uh, enlightening, most educating. If you really want to understand the world, the global scene, as well as the regional scene of the Middle East, it is worthwhile to watch TV7.